That last song is our prayer that God, through his word, will truly touch our hearts and that we don't just hear it and forget it, but that he'll truly change who we are and make us more Christ-like. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning we are looking at 2 Corinthians 5, 11 to 21, and then especially at verse 17, and a message that I would call the new normal. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. What's normal? What's normal in your life? What does it mean to be normal? There are many times, of course, when in the course of a day, we just think, I live a pretty normal life. We live pretty much like everybody else lives. Our lives are not all that sensational. They're not all that dramatic. Most of us really don't put a lot of thought into writing our own autobiography because most of us don't have that kind of a presumption that our life is so special and so spectacular that everybody in the world is going to want to read about us. Most of us live a pretty normal life. What's normal? Well, normal is what we're used to. Normal is just the routine of life. Normal is what we are used to doing and what we're used to thinking, places where we're used to going and people that we're used to having fellowship with. For us, that's normal. And normal is not only what we do, but normal is what around us, what's around us. We get used to our environment. We get used to our society. We get used to our community. We get used to our church. And, and we get used to the way that things are. And once we're used to it, then for us, that's normal. But you know, sometimes what's normal for us is not normal for other people. And even more significantly, what's normal for us, what we're used to and what we're maybe even comfortable with, maybe it shouldn't be so normal. Maybe we have to look at our lives from time to time and say, no, I'm used to this. I'm even comfortable with this. But is it right? Is it what God wants me to feel is normal? And that's really the point of the passage that we're looking at because in verse 17, the Apostle Paul says, the new has come. The new is here. There's a new normal. So again, what's normal? You know, at this time, a lot of immigrants are coming into Canada and Canada Immigration has posted something on the website to help immigrants understand what normal life is like in Canada. And I, I could use all kinds of illustrations, but this is my illustration this morning. What does Canadian immigration want immigrants and refugees to think is normal in Canada? The title on this webpage is Canada Respects All Types of Families. Family life in Canada is as diverse as its people. While many families are made up of two parents with children, there are many other types of families as well. In Canada, you may form the type of family that works best for you. For example, Canada has over one million single parent families with women heading most. There are hundreds of thousands of step families 
created when adults who already have children marry one another. And many common law unions, unmarried people who live together with and without children. Sometimes grandparents raise their grandchildren or uncles and aunts raise their nieces and nephews. Some parents adopt children. Other families are made up of same-sex couples with or without children, and many couples have no children. That's a quote. All of that word for word is quoted from Immigration Canada's website to introduce immigrants to what is normal in Canada. That's the society that we live in. That's the community that we live in. Those are the values represented, the diversity of values represented within this country and the context in which we live. Now, it's understandable that people coming to Canada would ask that question, what's normal in Canada? What do we expect? But we who live in Canada, do we ever stop and ask, so what has become normal for us, is that really normal? Should it be normal? Is it normal in the sense that God has a plan for us and God has a desire for the way that we are to live as our creator God and, and are we living that way? Is our normal right or is our normal wrong? And you know when you take a look at what's normal in the world around us and we take a look at it from the perspective of God's word and the Bible and, and the glorious life that God desires for us as his people, we may come to the realization and the recognition that normal is not good enough. When, when normal is not good enough, normal in the world today is a life that is focused on self. That quote that I read from Immigration Canada says, you're pretty much free to establish whatever kind of family you want. You got the freedom here to just do what you want, be the kind of person, be the kind of family, adopt the values and adopt the morals and adopt the standards that you want. Now, of course, we're not expecting immigra Immigration Canada to have uh, some kind of an evangelical website that talks about how in Canada, as a Christian nation, a nation founded on the Judeo-Christian principles, we're going to try to live our lives for God's honor and we're going to be up, upright and, and righteous citizens of this, this great land. That's not normal. Not anymore, it once was. One time, the, one time the values that are represented on this website from Immigration Canada would never, ever have been published that way. For a couple of reasons. First of all, it wasn't normal in those days. That wasn't the typical family. That wasn't the reality, that was not the practice of the day. And secondly, it would never have been put up in that way on a, on a website, not just because they didn't have computers and websites in those days, but it would not have been described that way. It would not have been written that way because there were underlying values and principles that reflected what was considered normal in the Word of God. And that was the basic expectation of society. And so we live in a world in which normal now is kind of whatever's pleasing to me, whatever we want, whatever we set our heart on, that that should be normal for us. When normal is not good enough, normal in the world today is surrendering to sinful desire. Did you know the Bible is full of passages and I don't need to I need to parade a whole list of those passages forward to show that God has an expectation for our lives. God created us with a purpose. 
God didn't create us as the crowning moment of creation with all of the gifts, abilities to communicate, abilities to think rationally, abilities to have moral judgment, abilities to do all kinds of things. God didn't create us that way for ourselves to build our own little empire. God's, God's purpose in us is not, first of all, for us to be on this mad and reckless pursuit of happiness, whatever that means, in disregard of holiness. God has created us to be holy and to honor him and to glorify him. And our happiness comes through the pursuit of holiness. And it's not the other way around. And people make an idolatry out of happiness. My goal is, is to find the happy life. My, my goal is to find wealth. My goal is to find fame. My goal is to find all of these things in life. But it's all focused on self. And that becomes normal. But there comes a moment when we recognize that that normal isn't good enough. Colossians 3, 5 to 6 says, So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. And because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You see, the Bible is very clear about the reality that what's considered normal in this world, apart from loving God and living for him and serving him, what, what's considered normal in this world and what sets the agenda for many people in this world isn't pleasing to God. It's not God honoring. It's not God glorifying. And so Colossians goes on to say, you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. You used to think that way. You used to walk that way. You used to prioritize that way. But as we read in Corinthians, the new has come. In Christ, there's a new normal. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. You see, there's, there's that point of recognition in our lives when the old normal, the old normal just doesn't do it anymore. The old normal isn't pleasing to God and the old normal doesn't fulfill us and the old normal, the old normal is not what we were created to be, and we recognize that by the Spirit of God. God's Spirit says to us, you can be better. You're above that. You're more valuable than that. You're more precious than that. Don't let yourself be dragged down to the lowest con common denominator of what is considered normal in this world because God has raised you up to something more glorious. God is, God is creating out of you something much more precious than that. When normal is not good enough, normal in the world today is a life estranged from God. And that's one of the saddest realities in our world. God is the glorious creator of heaven and earth. God, God is the supreme, almighty, eternal being who has created this world. And so many, many millions and billions of people go through life estranged from God. Not in fellowship with God, not in a prayer life with God, not feeling the security of God, not embraced and wrapped in the love of God. But millions and billions of people think it's normal to go through life either believing that there is no God or allowing God to be a giant question mark, but essentially estranged from God. And that's, for many people, normal. 
What does God say? They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. It wasn't supposed to be normal. People were not supposed to go through life with a heart that was hardened toward God. The heartbeat of people, men and women, boys and girls, the heartbeat of people was to be a pulse that longed for the love of God and desired to respond in gratitude to God. That was supposed to be normal in creation. The normal in creation was to have this vibrant, loving, living relationship with the Almighty God so that every day was a reaction to the splendor of the great and glorious God. And so you know what God offers today is the better than usual. God offers us the new normal, a life that's reconciled with God. A life where we're not strangers to God, a life in which we are embraced in that new relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And Romans 5 says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, how much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? And that passage just reminds us that God wasn't satisfied with the old normal God wasn't satisfied leaving us strangers, leaving us enemies of, of his. And so even while we were still sinful beings, preoccupied with our own willful way of life, God comes to us through the Holy Spirit and, and he taps us on the shoulder and he says, I've got something better for you. I'm calling you. I'm welcoming you, I'm loving you, I'm embracing you. I've got something better in mind for you. I want you to embrace the new normal. Don't be my enemy. Be my child. Be my friend. Be part of my kingdom. Be part of my plan. Be part of my eternal future. What God offers us is better than usual. It's a life of reconciliation with God, but a life also where people are reconciled with each other. You know, a lot of people go through life, and man, they have fights, they have conflicts, they have heartache and heartbreak, they have situations in life that aren't right, and they know it, and they try to fix it, and it didn't work, and you live with it, and you live with it, and you live with it. And after a while, it becomes normal. You throw up your hands. It's just part of life. It's just the way it is. But that's not the way God wants it to be. God wants the new normal. The new creation that we are living in a loving, harmonious relationship with him, he wants us to, to embody that in our relationships with each other as well. And the Apostle Paul is very clear about that. Look what, he, look what he writes to the church of Ephesus. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. Now he's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles who were miles apart. Man, if there, was, if there was a difference of opinion, if there was a difference of religious background, if there was a difference in terms of what was normal for Jews and the Jewish way of life and the Jewish law and all of the Jewish rituals and diet and all of that kind of stuff and what was normal for, for those Gentiles. Man, there's a big gap in between them. And there wasn't a lot of love lost between them oftentimes and they had their differences and they were so different because what was normal for one was totally not normal for the other. They, they were really different. And now... Jesus has brought them together into one body, the body of Jesus Christ. 
And he says, put your differences aside and find your oneness in me. Put your enmity aside. Put your rivalries aside. Put your hatred aside. And, and be one body in Jesus Christ. And the implications of that, if, if two groups that were so diverse and so far apart could be brought together, the implication is that with, within the body of Christ we are defined unity in Christ and oneness and to be reconciled not only to God but to each other. And I know that sometimes people's lives are so broken and there's dysfunctionality and there are patterns that have been entrenched and there are, are things that, issues that keep coming up. And sometimes this reconciliation just seems like a one-way thing. One person is coming and coming and coming and the other isn't giving. And we all deal with that. There are dynamics like that. But the message this morning is don't give up. And don't stop hoping and longing and praying and asking for reconciliation. Because there is, there is a new normal. And there can be a new normal. And lives can change and attitudes can change and old patterns can be broken. And in Christ there can be newness and the new normal. You know, once in a while we talk about testimonies and whether we ought to, at some point in our worship service, incorporate testimonies. And there's something very powerful about testimonies, about people coming in front of the body of believers, in front of their family, in terms of their Christian family, and, and just saying, you know, we talk sometimes about the power of prayer and we talk about how God changes lives and how Jesus makes us new and that kind of thing. But really, really, it does happen. I know. I know it happens. How do you, how do I know? Because it happened to me. Let me tell you what my life was like before and tell you what my life is like now. And no, I, I'm not perfect, and I make a lot of mistakes, and I mess up. I'm human. But my life today is not what it was before because I've experienced what the Bible says. The new has come. The old has gone. The new has come. I'm a new creation in Jesus Christ. And you know, people of God, there is something so very powerful. Hearing it from each other, verbalizing it, being transparent and open and just saying, this is, this is who I am, thanks to God. This is the new me, praise be to God. What God offers is better than usual a life where believers long for others to be reconciled to. Did you notice as we read this passage from Corinthians that Paul wasn't just satisfied with himself being a new creation and the other believers being a new creation, but he extends the prayer to others. There is a passion. There is a longing in people who have experienced the newness of Christ in, in Jesus, who have experienced the new normal to say, I want this for my family. I want this for my neighbors. I want this for the people that I work with. I can't, I can't be selfish about this and experience the new normal for myself and, and have my priorities and my life established by the new normal in Jesus Christ and not want that for other people as well. So people of God, this, this morning, the Word of God invites us to do a number of things, to consider what the new normal is or should be, and to live that new normal. We've seen what the reconciled life looks like, a life that is restored to fellowship with God, a life that restores fellowship and harmony amongst other people. We've seen what that looks like, but what does it take for you to get there? What does it take for you to get there? Now, you know, for each person, that's an individual question. 
And we can't just say, well, you need this and you need that and you need that and et cetera, et cetera. No, you, people of God, you need to stop this morning and ask. Now, in my life, what has become normal that maybe shouldn't be considered normal? Well, what do I do or what are some of the thought patterns or some of the, some of the things I think or say or do that have become normal for me but ought not to be normal if I'm the person that God really wants me to be? What does it take for you to get there? It takes humility. It takes honesty in terms of your, your willingness to look at your life in the mirror of God's word and then to say, and now, and now, who is God calling me to be? What do you want your new normal to look like? There's an assumption in that question, of course. That question assumes that we're not happy and we're not totally content and we're not totally pleased with who we are, even as a new creation. There's the assumption that God isn't finished with us yet, that there's some sanctification that still has to happen. There's some, some change of heart and change of life, but what do you want your new normal to look like? And don't give up on that dream of the new normal. Don't stop hoping, dreaming, praying, working that the fullness of Christ would live in you. There are things that you can do, and the Bible's very specific about that, what you can do to make the new normal a reality for you. We have this beautiful passage called Galatians 5, and 23, the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the signs of the new normal. That's the fruit of the new normal. The person that's led by the Spirit of God, the person that lives a life that's obedient to the Word of God, the person whose life is being transformed by the Spirit of God rather than conformed to the world in which we live. So this time of the year, epiphany, God has appeared. God has come to you. God has come to us also in his word this morning. How's God touching your heart? What's your new normal? Who do you want to be? And are you willing, in humility, filled with the spirit and the joy of God to become that person, the new normal. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, there are a lot of areas in our lives where we, we get convicted by your word and your spirit to recognize that, well, this has become pretty normal for us, but it really shouldn't be. You have something better in mind. And Lord, as you've touched each one of our hearts this morning and as you've applied this word to us individually and as we surrender our will and our heart and our mind to you, Father, we pray that you will complete in us that transformation and help us not, not to simply conform to the world and let be normal in our lives, what's normal in the world around us. But Father, really shape us to be your children, to be like you, loving holiness and truth and what is honorable and what is pleasing and what is helpful and, and upbuilding to others. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.